Solar sails are a new method of space travel designed for distances that far exceed that of any current space vessel. The sails are made of huge sheets of ultra-thin reflective capton film. Similar to the sails of a ship, these solar sails are designed to reflect photons emitted by the sun known as solar wind, and harness these particles as energy to propel it through space. Solar sails do not carry any fuel and have the potential to be groundbreaking space vessels due to their theoretically infinite travel distance. However, engineering a material that is incredibly strong, thin, reflective, and lightweight is a difficult challenge that must be overcome before solar sails can hope to be successful space vessel alternatives. With solar sails, we will no longer be hampered by the need to carry fuel weight. Only enough fuel for the carrier craft to carry the solar sail into orbit would be essential to the success of the mission. This technology also relies on lighter material overall, so even this fuel cost would be considerably lower. According to NASA, the current cost for launching a space shuttle is $450 million per mission. The technological advances developed for the sake of solar sails would be incredibly relevant to other scientific fields because the technology would need to be thin and light enough to be propelled through space while stern enough to avoid deformation. Before large-scale space travel can be achieved by means of solar sails, projects involving smaller solar scale sails can be investigated. The European Space Association has suggested using solar sails to study Earth's magnetosphere. While simulating this line of Earth's orbit would be extremely taxing using chemical propulsion, a solar sail does not face this problem and therefore only needs to change direction while maintaining a constant acceleration of um, 0.14 mm per second squared. Solar sails are also relevant in unmanned missions to other planets in our solar system or even the inner heliosphere of the Sun because um, we do not need chemical propulsion nor gravity assistance. Modern solar sailing ships are composed of three main parts. The first part is the rigid support system. This consists of the ribs and booms necessary to keep the sail taut enough that it will not billow in the radiation. The second part is the payload, which is whatever the ship is trying to carry. This can be anything from scientific equipment to hopefully in the future people. The final aspect of the ship is the sail itself. Solar sails today are made of three main layers. The first layer is the base layer. This is what provides the strength and body of the sail. Generally, this is made of capton film because of its low weight and thickness and high thermal resistance and tensile strength. The second layer, known as the reflective layer, is made of a very thin 0.1 micrometer coating of aluminum on the capton film. This provides the sail with the reflectivity required for propulsion. The third layer of the sail is the emitter. Made from chromium, the emitter is responsible for releasing whatever heat is absorbed by the reflector, allowing the sail to be closer to the light source and thus maximize the velocity. As of now, most solar sails have a total thickness of around 2 to 3 microns. Solar sails move through space propelled by the solar wind in a similar way to boats on the water that are propelled by the currents in the air. The general principle of solar sailing is that the radiation emitted by the sun produces a force on the sail that propels it forward. By changing the angle of the sail, one can change the angle of the force on the sail and thus the direction of travel. In a slightly simplified example, if the sail is angled so the force along its path is in the same direction as the orbit, as shown in the top diagram, the orbit will increase. If it's in the opposite direction of the orbit, like in the bottom diagram, it will decrease. Capton is a polymide, a specific type of polymer. Its scientific name is long and complex, but in essence it contains two amide groups, four aldehydes, one ether, in addition to three benzene rings. As a polymer, bulk capton consists of a repeating pattern of molecules held together with covalent bonds. Polymers tend to form crystalline structures rather than just crystals. This means that they exhibit an organized repeating structure, but of molecules rather than of unit cells. Generally, capton exists in thin layers from a couple of nanometers to a couple of millimeters thick. Capton is formed through a reaction between a dianhydride and a diamine. A dianhydride is a molecule that loses two water molecules in a reaction. A diamine is an organic molecule with two amine and H2 groups. These two molecules react in a two-step synthesis reaction to create the polymide capton and two water molecules. While the reaction itself is not that complicated, the details regarding the reaction contribute greatly to the end properties of the capton film. Factors like reaction conditions, the mode with which the monomers are combined, and choices of diamines and dianhydrides contribute greatly to properties like the temperature at which the capton turns into glass and the overall molecular weight of the product. 
Once Kapton is synthesized, it is converted into a film by the extrusion of the polyamide solution into a casting surface. Once cast, the Kapton is cured at 670 Kelvin in order to give it high tensile strength. This temperature is selected because it is under the glass phase transition temperature of 680 Kelvin, therefore strengthening the Kapton to the highest it can be without changing its phase. Once cured, the mechanical properties vary significantly with temperature. Ideal operating temperatures for the use of Kapton in solar sails is between 520 and 570 Kelvin. And although mechanical properties degrade with these higher temperatures, it still has a higher lifespan under these conditions than other competitive films. Kapton uses the monomers pyromelitic dianhydride and 4,4-oxydianiline due to the fact that these monomers produce high molecular weight products. The reaction to form Kapton is an equilibrium reaction, and the driving force behind said reaction relies heavily on the concentration of monomers, where a high concentration will yield a polymide with high molecular weight, and a low concentration will yield a polymide with low molecular weight. Additionally, molecular weights affect the density and tensile strength of the material. Therefore, the choice of concentration of monomer heavily dictates the structure of Kapton and thus alters the properties, namely the density and weight of the Kapton. This relationship is very important, as the Kapton used in solar sails needs to retain a high tensile strength while keeping the density as low as possible to reduce the force needed to propel the craft. Kapton has an extremely high tensile strength at 1.72 times 10 to the 8 newtons per meter squared when processed in the aforementioned banner. Coating of aluminum takes place using a process called vapor deposition, where the aluminum is converted to a vapor in a vacuum and condensed onto the Kapton to a liquid and finally solid, evenly distributed across the material. Here we have a sample of 1 millimeter thick Kapton film, and now we're going to demonstrate some of its properties. Here we have a butane lighter which reaches temperatures of 1100 degrees Celsius and we will now show that Kapton will not catch fire when exposed to high temperatures. We will now demonstrate the tensile strength of Kapton. As you can see, it is highly elastic, but it is not breaking. It should also be noted that this is highly below the grade of material that would be used by NASA in a solar sail. Although the theory of solar sails is a great one, and it's been proven to work on a smaller scale test, there are still major problems that exist if scientists were to attempt interplanetary or inner solar system travel. One of these is size. Much larger sails are necessary for travel to another solar system. Scientists predict the sail would need to be the size of Texas for a sail to reach another solar system in a hundred years. Another major problem is the Kapton material itself. While Kapton never melts, it rather deteriorates at a temperature of 520 degrees Celsius. A sail flying around for that amount of time would need to withstand copious amounts of solar electromagnetic radiation, solar wind, and residual atmospheric cosmic radiation. Kapton may be thin and have a strong tensile strength, but many wonder if it will hold up to solar radiation for large amounts of time. This also poses a new problem. The developed vehicle must have a mass to area ratio of only a fraction of riding paper, according to the European Space Association. If Kapton deteriorates and cannot be used, scientists must find a new substance that fulfills the rigorous requirements of the solar sail. The idea of a solar sail is a bold one. While the theory is sound, the technology is not caught up yet. Kapton is both lightweight and strong, but many are concerned the so that solar winds will deteriorate the material. Travel to other solar systems would also take over a century, making human travel impossible and non-human travel impractical. Les Johnson, deputy manager at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center, said, quote, I think it's 300 to 500 years away. Personally, I think before we ever really undertake sending something to another star, we will probably have to be masters of our own solar system, end quote. However, the technology found with solar sails may be used as vessels with our own solar system and can only help further the technology of space travel.